and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this one later on for some more Grixis midrange. I know we just played this deck a couple of days ago on Rank Up Sunday, but the both times that we've played this deck so far, it's just been really impressive. We've won all of our matches, and I want to just keep on testing the deck out. So we're bringing it here to Tier 1 Tuesday. Also, <laughs> Nate the Insane with that Twitch Prime sub. What's up, Nate? Thank you very much for that support. I appreciate that. But yeah, that's right. It's Tuesday. So that therefore, we have Tier 1 Tuesday, um, which... You know, going forward, we're not. I'm not necessarily going to always have Tuesday be Tier 1 Tuesday because then we may be playing the same decks too much. But, you know, uh, we're probably doing Tier 1 Tuesdays a good amount. And today we're going to go ahead and do it again. Last week we played four decks. Uh, this week I got three new decks for today. Maybe a little bit of a shorter stream. I think we'll probably just be doing three decks today. Um, and, you know, kick it back up with four decks tomorrow. But today I wanted to play Grixis Midrange here. Uh, give it one more, uh, another test in ranked. What's up, Alexis Bros? With it. And then we have Boros Feather and uh, Jun Dinosaurs. And both of those lists that I'm going to be playing with Boros Feather and Jun Dinosaurs were lists that did really well in the standard premier event this past weekend on Magic Online. The Boros Feather deck went 7 0. Can't really do much better than that. And the Jun Dinosaurs deck went 6 1. But I'll talk about more, those decks more during those videos. But if you're watching this later on YouTube, hopefully you click on those as well. Anyway, yeah, this is Grixis Midrange. So I've only played this deck two times, and both times we played it, we went 5-0. But one time was not in ranked, and then the last time on Sunday was in ranked. So you know, can't really do much better than that. It's been just pretty impressive. So the, the, the whole theory, of course, behind the deck, I'll just kind of explain it again. Is, but if you've seen the other videos, you probably already understand. But we have Knight of the Ebon Legion, Dreadhorde Butcher, and Thief of Sandy as cards that aren't, let's see, they're cards that have like a, a wide uh, spectrum of how good they are. There are times when Dreadhorde Butcher or Thief of Sandy or Knight of the Ebon Legion, there's times that those cards just take over the game and can win games on their own. Like they're very powerful cards. But there's other times whenever your opponent has like a good amount of creatures and play and stuff that you can't really get through with your Dreadhorde Butcher or your Thief of Sandy gets continually bounced by... Um, Teferi, uh, Time Raveler, and there's times those cards are kind of underpowered, but uh, overall it just kind of gives us another angle of attack with Grixis instead of just being uh, very easy to attack from the opponent side where they know that we're just going to have discard and removal early and then big threats late and that's it. And it's you know pretty easy to game plan around. Here we have like a good mix. It's kind of like the, um, the theory behind Hero of Precinct 1 in Esper Hero. What's up, Rogo? Rogo Bop. That's a cool name. Uh, where um, we have, you know, have just different angles of attack, like where you, you know, the opponents have to like keep in removal for Knight of the Ebon Legion and Dreadhorde Butcher, right? So they're like trying to use removal to kill these things. They're worried about that, and then my Thought Erasure takes like some uh, spell for uh, that would have taken out Nickel Bolas Dragon God, but they don't have any any more. Removal left, and then our Dragon God just takes over. You know, we have games like that. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's just been a, a very solid deck. Um, so we're going to play it again here in Ranked uh, and see how it goes. Um, the the two biggest decks right now are Vampires and Scape Shift. And I think that Grixis here has the tools against those decks. We have a whole bunch of Legion's Ends, which are very good against Vampires. And just general removal spells pretty good against them as well plus like hostage taker taking out a danto vanguard or knight of the ebon legion like hostage taker is very good against vampires and then of course we have our planeswalkers that can take over the game and against scape shift we have again like the legion's ends but then we also have blood suns and unmourned egos so we have a lot of different tools in those matchups so um, i wonder if grixis can be tier one with those other decks on top right now okay so um yeah, I did, Shaper. Um, so that's, that's what we're going to be doing today. So we're playing five matches with each deck today. Uh, and let's start with Grixis Midrange and give it another test, see if it still holds up. Here we go. Salty Hercules, hey. And Lord Paku. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Welcome. 
That's some pretty cool art there for Lotus Field. That's in the background. I like that one. Okay, our opponent is ready. <laughs> Sideboarding is pretty tough. That is maybe the hardest thing in Magic, or best of three. That's true. Um, this is the thing to do with sideboarding is to not just put generic cards in your sideboard. You know, just don't just put like, oh, I have, I have two, you know, whatever spell. I have two hostage takers in my main deck, so that means I probably want two hostage takers in the sideboard and, and that kind of stuff. Um, or just, okay, I'm playing Grixis Color, so that means I'm going to play Noxious Grasp and Ether, uh, Ether Gust and Fry. You know, just have generic color hosers in here. Definitely want to plan. You want... You want to be thinking about what decks you're going to be facing. You're like, all right, I'm going to be playing against Scapeshift. What's really good against Scapeshift? Or I'm playing against Vampires. What's really good against Vampires? And put those cards in your sideboard. Hmm. So if I take the cast down... Kind of the problem with taking the cast down is the Soren can still kill Thief of Sanity. Maybe I should just be taking the Soren. Yeah. Yeah, Soren's just the best card. So I want them to, to cast down a Knight of the Ebon Legion, but I don't think I'm going to cast down the Vicious Conquistador, I don't think. So I'll just get this Watery Grave in play here. You played the Simic Yoink after I got done with it yesterday. You went 6-0 before going to bed. That is awesome. Yeah, glad you're loving the deck and, and stealing everything. Awesome, glad to hear. So, of course, certainly uh, considering attacking and everything first. Ooh, they got rid of the cast down. Okay. Well, that's good news for our Thief of Sanity. I wouldn't mind drawing a land here where I could have Thief plus cast down. Certainly possible they just have another... Certainly possible they have another cast down in their hand. Yep, looks like they do. Alright, let's draw a land.
Oh, where's the land? Wait, I forgot that attacking with the Nickel Bulls is going to grow these Knight of the Ebon Legions. What am I doing? <laughs> Alright, I should have been attacking on these things a little earlier. This gains a life also. Alright, so if I strike, Conquistador, nah. Hey, Blue Jin, good afternoon. I should be, I'll be striking an, an, a Vanguard here, most likely. But I, I wanted to wait. I didn't want to just strike immediately because if they draw Soren and like the Soren gives one of their things lifelink, I would strike whatever they choose to give lifelink and then they can't pay. So it's good to wait there. All right, I should have been attacking a little earlier, but that's all right. We got there. You know, first game of the day. We're getting, we're knocking some t some uh, cobwebs out of there. Getting in the zone here. All right, so we got the legions ends, and we're bringing those in. Um, is that all I do in this matchup? Just bring legions in. I feel like. I think I'll bring in Duress also. I think I'll bring in Legion's End and Duress and Cut Butcher. I think that's what I was doing before. I don't think I want another Chandra 6. I think one Chandra 6 maybe, but like the thing is, is it's, it's, Chandra's not always a sweeper. Their creatures can get bigger. right? By the time it's 6 mana, those, their creatures can get bigger. But I think the first one's good. Dun, dun, dun. Post board, usually the vampire deck has a little more removal and interaction. And so duress is duress can be a little bit better there, helping to protect our different threats. Alright, hoping no Adanto Vanguard. Yeah, I think I like Thieva Sanity more than than Butcher. For this matchup. So while they do have more removal, they don't have a ton of removal. But Thief can still help us take over. Tanto Vanguard still pretty big problem. I think I'm gonna go aspirant and strike. And I'm just, I'm just using Aspirant to just, you know, just chump block a Dante Vanguard. Like, that's 
that's perfectly fine. Just, you know, Thief, like, hitting them, like, getting us a chump blocker, making them pay for life. They want to keep their thing around. It's perfectly reasonable. I'm fine with that. their last two cards in hand and play anything I don't think I want the life loss of dusk, but I could be wrong there. But even I feel like Maverick Fan can just compare like with it costing three mana, it compare with something else that Thief of Sandy grabs or the We Draw. You know, like it, it can pair pretty easily there. But yeah, Thief of Sandy did his job. Helped us survive the Adanta Vanguards. Guess they flooded out a little bit. But that'll happen. Hey, what's up, Raz? Rex? Good afternoon. Happy Tier 1 Tuesday. Steam vents. Hmm. Well, I'm planning on using the other Thought Erasure to take the Crackling Drake, so I just want to take the Charter Course, which is better than Tormenting Voice. Um, yeah, let's look for land. Land, where you at? Hmm. Well, go get him, Butcher. You're not going to get Lightning Strike or nothing. That's not me getting lightning striked. I think so, Rex. I think I prefer this over Grixis Control. But I wanted to, you know, play the deck a little bit more today and. You know, continually see. But yeah, I've been. Been real happy with the deck. Um, our removal doesn't line up well against Arclight Phoenix at all. I don't have exile stuff. You just don't you don't see Arclight Phoenix very much. Like I haven't played against Arclight Phoenix in you know a week or two or something. Yeah, I haven't seen it in a long time. I don't, I don't remember the last time I saw Arclight Phoenix. So that admittedly is a problem. Stop. With the crackling drakes. That card's good.
They have so much velocity through their deck. They just get to find all the threats. So I think I'm just gonna I'm just playing the two knights here. I'm not playing the Thief of Sanity so that I have the knight activation up so that knight doesn't just die to a single removal spell. I would prefer to draw another land here where I can activate and still have another activation up. That would be nice. What? Come on. Shenanigans. This specific matchup I'd rather be playing. This is one I'd rather be playing. Grixis Control, that's for sure. But like I said, I haven't faced this matchup in weeks. But they got me. Yeah, I, I don't have Lava Coils. I don't, I don't have Exile stuff for, for Phoenix. All right, Ego hits Phoenix, though. And this, Chandra exiles. Let's get a bunch of duresses in there. Um, I don't think Legion's End, actually. Like, maybe Electromancer, I guess, but I don't know if it's really hidden stuff. Hmm. Like, they have so many shocks and, like, so much acceleration through their deck. Like, Diva Sandy's just going to get shocked. It's just never going to never gonna do anything but get shocked. And so for a three-mana card, just to get shocked is just not, not what we want. Correct. Yeah, the Chandra minus X will exile stuff, which is good. I mean, basically, Angrath, Angrath is ticking up. I mean, I think I like Angrath. I think I want to try to turn into a control deck. We need to hit land drops. I mean, Knight and Butcher aren't spectacular. I think Knight's probably better than Butcher. Don't really even love Lightning Strike or anything, but we're going to keep this. Yeah, Hostage Taker can... Like, we're talking about late, late game. You know, like, we stabilize with other stuff. You know, we have, like, eight mana. We Hostage Taker a Phoenix and then cast the Phoenix kind of thing. Uh, is it perfect? No, but I don't. I don't have anything better in my sideboard that I that I want. Like I think I'd rather have Hostage Taker than Dread Horde Butcher. All right. Well, I should. I should probably. I should just be playing the Drown Catacomb here. But oh, well, I don't think it will. Affect us too much. 
Okay, affects us a little bit. Now I'm tapped out. I was kind of already playing that land before I drew the Drown Catacomb. Because if they have another creature here, I would have been... Yeah, see, I would have been able to cast down that and then go Ravager. But now I can't. I'm not sure if I do want to cast down this Electromancer, though. Just because cast down kills Crackling Drake. I guess all these Dragon Gods kill Crackling Drake, though. Hmm. So that hurt. That that did hurt me. How I sequenced that land. I should have been able to play Ravager this turn. Should be able to cast down on that other end stuff. All right. Just want to reduce their resources. Alright, so now they could have Negate available. So we'll go with this. Obviously, I'm not blocking. <laughs> My streams are never ending. Perfect job. I'm Chandra, the immolation sensation. <laughs> bye bye. Very good. Mm. I do think they have a negate, so I don't really want to play Dragon God here. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> we'll see if they. We'll see what they do here with this Dreadhorde Butcher. Okay, well that makes it easy. We get to Dragon God. Good job, Dragon. Good job, the Butcher. We'll be your all soldier. Interesting. They went after Dragon God. Even though Chandra is the thing that exiles Phoenix. No! I guess, on yeah. Hmm. I am a god once again. I have other schemes to attend. I outsmarted you eons ago. So they'll only be able to play just the Phoenix. The 
draw two one mana spells? No. Okay. That went pretty well. That went pretty well. Do I want this Chandra in here instead of Dreadhorde Butcher? Maybe I do. Yeah, I think I do. You know, recast these things. Maybe I want the butcher. Nah. Hmm. This is like you know better on like turn five, turn six, stuff like that. But in my opening hand, I'd rather have butcher. And I think on the draw, I get. I think I'd rather play the card. I'd rather have my opening hand. I liked it better when we, had, when we had a bunch of dragon gods in our hand. I liked that better. I don't have the mana for the Dragon God right now, though. More black mana. Need more mana in general. I don't like where we're at. Yep. Don't like where we're at at all. over. Hey, WQ. We can't really just afford to hit to miss those land drops and everything. That's... Tough match up there for how my cards line up or for, for like the removal I'm playing. If I just hit land drops and get to the planeswalkers, uh, that's like you know I can win the games. We saw that with game two, but the games like where I don't, where I just don't have very many lands and have the creatures, we are not we're not winning. Well, that was my very first loss with this deck. In my twelfth match with it, but yeah, I'm not. You know, I just haven't I haven't played against Phoenix in a couple of weeks and. So I just don't have removal that's good against Phoenix. That's, that, you know, good good choice by the opponent there to zig where other people are zagging. So Rejuvenator is one land. Circuitous Route is two lands. And 
this is what we have most of our sideboard for, of course. Doubtful we win game one. Ooh, that's a good draw, though. That'll help us out. We'd really like to draw Nicol Bolas Dragon God for this next turn, that's for sure. Taking up and reducing their resources. This isn't a fight you can win. I'll protect you. Hey, Ender. I really should have seen that coming. Maybe they won't draw escape shift. Is that possible? Reduce these cards as much as possible. Dig, look for Chandra. They can get like a sweet, you know, we have a Chandra, Legion's End, as far as sweepers in the main deck, and try to finish off this game with Ravager. Boosty. Boostio. <laughs> Boostio. Welcome to the channel. Thanks for that Twitch Prime sub. You were awesome. Thank you very much. Three subs today. I appreciate that. Okay, good thing we kept the devil. Of a time planeswalker. Ugh. So they get six more zombies. This one isn't, the escape shift isn't lethal, but it's a lot of zombies. So they have seven, seven zombies right now. Yeah, we want Chandra or Legion's End off the top. Those would be nice. They always scry to the top. It's just always scry top. Um, do I, do I wait a turn and let them, like, if they're going to escape shift again, do I wait? Probably not, but I don't know. I could, could get punished here, I guess. Another field of the dead there. I'm not exactly sure how, how I could get punished. I don't know, like if it's another escape shift on top. I guess that them keeping that card on top make, makes me not want to. You have no weakness that I cannot exploit. So they go seventh land, another escape shift. I mean, if it's not escape shift, we're, we're looking great. Okay, I guess not great, great. Yeah, yeah, pretty great. Yeah, because this this thing just flips. Resistance. 
I mean, or I could just try to kill them. Hmm. That's a really tough call whether to flip it or not with them being at three. You know, if they they have hardly any draws that actually stop me, but they if they draw another deputy or little to fairy, you know, th then they can go from there. All right, so clutch legions end draw there for us for sure. All right, bringing in the sideboard. Maybe hostage taker. Is Steve Sandy actually going to get through here? So butcher knight out. Um, strike out. Angrath out. Well, I don't know. Angrath can clear their hand and everything too. Angrath is good against deputy and crisis. This is good against deputy and crisis. I don't know if that means we need to play it though. We have just other removal. Yeah, we'll just cut. We'll just cut it. All right, um, I got what? Cast down, Bedevils. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> the butcher is not good in this matchup. Doesn't doesn't really get through to like you know they get they get their zombies pretty early, um, but even not like just Elv the Elvish Rejuvenator, a Boreal Grazer. Uh, you saw their like little Teferi resetting it. It's not a card that's going to win you the game. It doesn't. The little bit of damage it can do just doesn't isn't going to really matter. We need bigger cards, heavier hitters. Always got Veil of Summer. Must be nice. <laughs> I can no longer stand by and watch. Let's try this. Field of the Dead. All right, what else we got in here? To Fairy Hero of Dominaria, and then Crasis. Bunch of Crasis. Two To Fairy Hero of Dominaria, and then the four Crasis. What's their hand? Uh, it should still just show me their hand. So we gotta deal with four Krasis and two Teferi Hero of Dominaria. Don't worry, I got. Well, I guess I should have looked more of like their counterspell suite. 
how much of how many like I know I saw Dovin's veto, but I didn't check how many Dovin's vetoes, Vale of Summers, that kind of stuff. There's two veils left. This might be a bad idea. My my plan next turn is to go Dragon Guide, kill the Krasis. Next turn. You show remorse. I'll show restraint. That's good. So you get to bounce Krasis. That's nice. Good play for the opponent. No, I am not making this up as I go. Will resonate throughout. I will return. My intellect is without limit. I, yeah, y'all are talking about the mastery system in there. I don't know why... Oh, wow, that's a good draw. Let's just do this so if they have more crisis, we exile those too. Yeah. All right, two crisis gone. I don't really know why they... They took away the ability to buy levels. I, I honestly just don't... I don't know why you can't buy levels anymore. Like why, like, why would they take away that option? Like, why are options bad? I don't understand. They didn't? You can? I, I like, looked, like, earlier today. You Oh, you did just yesterday? Oh, I looked at it, like, today, and it didn't have, like, a buy level thing. Okay, it's still there. It's just more obscure. You have to click on the level you want to reach now. Okay. Anyway, Ant-Man, thank you so much for that sub. Everybody gets your hype votes in the chat for the Ant-Man. I have other plans. Let your weak Thanks, minds man. crumble. All right, we'll get this blood sun going. Now we don't even have to pay two life. Watery grave just comes into play untapped. That's good deck building. Right there. Because, yeah, the lands lands don't have any... Um, all lands lose all abilities except mana one. So there's no... You know, and it enters the battlefield. You may pay two life if you don't. It enters tapped. So it's just... It's just underground sea now. But these, like, that does... Uh, they their lands won't like gain life anymore. There's no scry lands anymore. Yeah, we had underground sea and standard. Pretty good. So, do I want to have Chandra awaken Inferno kill? Here we go. To fairy. Yep, this is the same deck I streamed two days ago. Yep. Because, yeah, we've been just doing so well with it. I wanted to play it again here on the Tier 1 Tuesday. We do good with it again today, which it looks like we're going to be 2-1 here. I'm probably going to be making a deck guide here for this deck. And uh, just for YouTube and uh, posting it up on YouTube there. 
with like sideboarding and stuff like that. So to help uh, if y'all want to pick up this deck, because yeah, the decks looked really impressive. Um, sure, we lost to the is it Phoenix deck, but that's not a deck I'm expecting to face too much. But looks like we're going to be victorious against vampires and scape shift here. I'm gonna plus two the nickel bolus to get it up to eight. I need some kindling. And you look flammable enough. And I'll minus three the Chandra and just get rid of this Time Raveler. Don't get to draw another card with it or anything. Looks like they probably have Scape Shift in their hand and they're trying to decide what to do with the Scape Shift. That'd be my guess right about now. Or they may be salty like everybody else is saying in chat. Yeah, they get to cast they can it's a sorcery, but they we plus will. the time raveler so they could cast a sorcery instant speed. You. Nope. Go straight to their upkeep. <laughs> all their all their toys are exiled. They're all sad. All right, we'll be two and one. Game Shifts is still a really good deck. It's still really hard to beat. I know everybody's trying to counter it, but that doesn't mean they can. <laughs> it's hard to beat an escape shift on your end step when you can't play instance. It's still really hard to beat. You haven't missed Grixis yet, Shock. Marking this down as a win. You cannot defeat me. You cannot defeat the dragon god. Victory. All right, two and one. We're playing five matches each with our three decks today. What's up, Prep Coin? Remember how oppressive Soltai Explorer was back in the day when it got Hydroid Crisis? I know, right? Did Soltai Explorer with Hydroid Crisis? Oh man, that was everywhere. That was that was the deck. <laughs> yep, Tier One Tuesday is also secretly Rank Up Sunday. 
figured it out. Ooh, doctor, 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 doctor. I like this name. Why do we have to draw all the blue? Like, it's good to have the blue red lands in here, but I don't like them. Oh, <laughs> need more black mana. I guess this is a keep. I kind of want a mulligan. Like, so we we have three lands towards Dragon God right now. I guess that's still a keep. One of these lands don't doesn't cast Dragon God. Doctor, 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 doctor. Yeah, John Dinos is tier one. It's pretty great. I think. I don't know. It puts up a lot of good results, I guess. I've actually never played the deck. We're going to be playing it for the first time earlier, later today. So that's how time works. Um, that's the lieutenant. Yeah, you cool. And then we'll cast down this Ebon Legion. And play the Blood Crypt here. good. That was a good draw. Ooh. Let's, kill, let's clear out their last card first. Okay. This is but a taste of my power. So I think they should just be attacking with both creatures first. They could have got more damage and just attack with both creatures. And then if I block, they can sacrifice another thing to kill my Ravager. I guess that gets rid of two of their things when my Ravager's gone. Come on, black mana. Black mana... Oh my gosh, you're killing me, Blue Red Land. You're actually killing me. Hey, Dark Dude, good to see you. Dang, yeah, almost at 8,000 YouTube subscribers. That is awesome. Because this thing had death touch. So I didn't block and pump. Guess I'm going to be doing that now, though. This is really, this is bad. This is really bad. Oh. Certainly wish I would have just blocked last turn. I knew they were drawing cast down.
Now we're just dead. Dang. That fourth blue red land really cost me. I thought we were winning that game for sure. But they they drew second Soren. And I drew that fourth blue red land. And that was not lucky. Should have just blocked the first time. Yep. Of course. Yeah, hindsight's twenty twenty. Here I thought approach of the second Soren rotated out. like to draw land, please. Land or Legion's End? So Soren can pump uh, the knight here. I mean, it's good that we we took two Sorens away from them. I don't know if like I actually really want to cast the Soren too much, but it's good that we got two Sorens out of them. I kind of want to just block the Sky Marcher aspirants here. Stop. Okay, maybe not. I was thinking blocking the Sky Marcher Aspirant would not let them flip landing next turn, but they'll still be able to flip landing. I think I still block. I gotta keep my life total high. That was not a land. That was not good. Drill bit. I guess. Just gotta get a land. We can have the Ravager block the Vanguard. Shock land. Hmm. 
No, do not activate that. Oh gosh, do not activate that. Whew, okay. Perfect. That was exactly what I wanted. I wanted a one man of vampire. I bow to nothing on my own obligations. We'll sack this thing. Do three to them. So now they've taken five damage. So that our knights will grow bigger and we'll gain three life. Go back up to eight. And we're looking good. Yeah, we're the vampire deck now. Doesn't feel great playing against Soren. Okay, so we're going to have to steal game three here. We got game one stolen from us. Let's see if we can get game three on the draw. Yeah, Thief Thief has been really good for us in two games against vampires. Both games both game twos against vampires, Thief has been awesome for us. Like just Thief taking one drops and allowing us to double spell and just playing crappy creatures, but just, you know, playing something for one mana plus something else has been awesome. It's basically it's basically been like Thief hits them, you get a one mana two one kind of thing. Which has been pretty good. Hey, what's up, good brother? Thanks for joining back. Joining back. <laughs> joining in. I don't know. Welcome back. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I like this deck a lot. I. If we lose this match, I'm going to regret that game one. How, you know, we had the four blue red lands. We couldn't cast Dragon God. And how I didn't make that block. I think the game one was definitely winnable. Mama. The one that showed the best results yesterday was the Simic uh, ramp, the Simic uh, ramp deck. As far as the decks that we played yesterday, that was the one that showed the best results. But. Um, with that being said, the, the Esper deck felt really good, though, too. There are some pretty cool lands.
Uh, another five drops, not what we need. I want Nickel Bolus the Ravager or a removal spell for Sanctum Seeker. Can we draw land? Ugh, hopefully. Then they use their removal spell. Just... Alright, so we need to draw we need to draw land. And then Dragon God kills Sanctum Seeker. Well as far as if it wasn't gonna be a land, that was about as good as it could be. Cards rotate out at the end of September. Whenever Th Throne of Eldraine is released on Arena, which is end of September. Come on. That was a terrible draw. It's probably the worst draw in the deck, right? Can't we just draw a land? Ugh. Couldn't get the land. And Grath, you know, would steal Vanguard if we just have that fifth land. That was a bummer. Two certainly game like two games that we lost there that really felt winnable. Like two games that I really thought we were gonna be winning, but we just drew pretty pretty poorly both of those times and um Yep, yeah, opponent didn't help us out by drawing poorly also. With with those Vanguard and Sanctum Seekers. Hey, doctor. GG's. Really thought I was going to win that, that game one that we had there. But I drew I drew four of the blue red lands with the, the dragon god in my hand that game one. Oh, that was really frustrating. Um... Probably shouldn't ditch a land. Here are the cast down. <laughs> yep, could play Lotus Field. Even that game three, I thought, uh, I was gonna win after the, like I thought I felt pretty good, like felt pretty good about the game three, we just never get, got that other land drops, but where I was at was gonna be tough if you drew a Soren, of course, but could never get that land to get to Angrath and Bolas and all those cards. So Narset finding Narset, huh? So if I bedeviled Narset, it's kind of the same way either way. I won't forget our time together. 
Okay. Glad we did. Hmm. So I want to take Narset here, but then Negate gets rid of Dragon God, and that's a big problem for me. Not as big of a problem. Oh yeah, that that cast down. Yeah, that. I I knew I should have just blocked it that first time. I took too long. I should have just blocked it the first time. But yeah, that cast down wrecked me. I have other schemes to attend to. Well, it doesn't look good for us now. They got rid of that dragon god, because any whenever any creature comes out here, then they'll have the double enter the god eternals, and that'll be tough. Can't even, I can't even play this butcher. So, hmm. Doesn't look good for me. Kefnet's pretty busted. Hey, Chief. I don't, I don't really know how to answer is Simic Flash worth crafting. There's so many factors about one's, a, you know, ability or, or desire or all that kind of stuff to craft a deck that I can't, I can't answer for somebody else. So I don't, I don't know. Um, It's a, yeah, I just don't know how to really answer the question. Um, if the question is referred to as like, is Simic Flash a good deck? I think so. Um, I think I think Simic Flash. I don't know. I just don't play against Simic Flash nearly as much right now as I did a few weeks ago, which is telling, saying that the it's you know the fact that it's gotten a lot less popular probably means that it's not as successful as it was previously. That would be my take no on that. Obstacles. I shall miss your company. I have just the trick for this. Uh, yes, if you want Denriel, yeah, you you can play Kefnet instead of Nicol Bolas. If you you know you don't have Nicol Bolas and you don't want to craft Nicol Bolas, you can you can play Kefnet instead. That's that's certainly reasonable. 
Hey, what's up, crazy support? Thanks for that Twitch Prime sub. I appreciate that. Alright, so this is straight up blue black control. Guess I need to keep stuff for those four fours. Definitely don't want lightning strike. Hostage Taker is pretty good against them. So is Angrath. So is Dragon God. All right, I guess we have we have a good amount of things against those. All right, what are we cutting from here? I appreciate that crazy support. Um, <laughs> I don't. I'm not. I'm not sure about the drill bits. I'm not not convinced on those. Like, are you playing those instead of duress? Because I, I think I'd rather just have duress. That's always one mana kind of thing. I know you can grab like crisis and, and other things with drill bit. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's worth it. Even though I wasn't convinced, that doesn't mean it's not. Good, you know. Okay, okay, you're doing two of each as an experiment. Against, like, the green decks, it is really nice to have that versatility. Like, being able to grab, like, Cavalier Thorns or Hydroid Crasis is really nice. Of course, you do need to be hitting your opponent. So, you know, you need to be... You need to already have, like... In order to turn on drill bit, you also have to have like your lands and your cheap creatures, and then your drill bit is is fine. And by fine, I mean then it's good. Where duress is just always reliable. So yeah, you, you can't cut your one drops at all. So it does. So like, I'm not exactly sure like what your plan is against the green decks, but if your plan. Um, doesn't include cutting one drops, then I think it could be worth it. I should just shock in there. Or just, yeah. Man. Oh, it's crushing me. Look at all those cards over there. Where's Kefnet? God Eternal Kefnet. I do not want to ever deal with the Kefnet. That card's impossible to deal with. Drawn from Dreams is awesome. Liliana is pretty good. Whole bunch of Kefnets over here. They're going to. You have just a ton of Legion's Ends. All right. They have four Legion's Ends. All right. Well, if I win this game... Command the Dread Horde. If I win this game, I know how to, to re-sideboard. So they, they took out Enter the God Eternals. Or no, there's one. Oh, there's still... Is there two? Oh, there's still two. Okay. So there's two Enter the God Eternals, one Ugin. And to command the Dread Horde. Um, I don't know. I don't know, Bappy. I don't know the the price of of Death Shadow right now. Gosh, how am I supposed to beat these guards? I mean, I could take the Drawn from Dreams, I guess. They still have this as Kanta, though. I'm I'm just dead. I mean, I, I need to draw Nicol Bolas Dragon God. Like, if I draw Nicol Bolas Dragon God, then suddenly I'm looking great. God, 
Do I just play this thing? I guess. Do I need a Nickel Bolus Dragon God. Wrong one, but I'll take it. And I'm dead. The classic, have a whole bunch of spells and not very many lands, you're going to beat the deck with lots of lands and not very many spells, if it's a long game. Six mana cards are really, really powerful. Command the Dreadhorde, Liliana, I mean, same with Chandra, Nicol Bolas and all those kind of things. They had theirs, I didn't have mine. Anyway, um, so yeah, we went 2-3, but... Honestly, it was pretty close to winning. Like, all those matches we lost could have been wins. Um, not really that last one, I guess. Uh, that last one, you know, like, our, our opponent just drew a lot better than us both those games. So, like, they, you know, they beat us there. Um, but, yeah, the Vampire loss could have definitely been a win. And we weren't that far away from winning against Phoenix, but Phoenix, our, our removal doesn't line up. But yeah, some of those other matchups, we finally played some matchups where our opponents went over the top of Knight and Butcher and Thief, and they just they went over the top of those cards. Um, so, you know, we finally picked up some losses with the deck. Still, you know, beat Vampires, beat Scapeshift. So looking good there. Um... I don't know. I don't, like, losing a blue-black mirror, those kind of blue-black mirrors are, are really just toss-ups, like, who, you know, like, I don't, I don't think there's anything our deck needs to change or anything that it shows that our deck's bad because we lost the blue-black mirror. We could have very easily won it, too, if, you know, if cards were going the other way. Um, but seeing that they had the four Legion's Ends in their deck... Did make me wish I would have sideboarded a little differently and just cut knights and butchers completely in that matchup there. Um, don't know if I had enough to bring in, though, if I would have done that. So we would have eight cards. We would have had three duress, one elder spell. That's four. And then five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, we just had those eight. Eight for eight there. Which would have meant I would have kept a couple cast downs. Cast down's not really that good either. Don't think I'd want to play Blood Sun there, but I guess against Ascanta, Blood Sun's pretty good. And Blood Sun does Cantrip. I guess I could have played some Blood Suns and would have shut down Ascanta instead of the Cast Downs. Oh well. Um, yeah, so that's Grixis Midrange. Uh, why do we have Chain Whirlers in the Chandra Tribal deck? Because just because Chain Whirler, Chain Whirler is good against every deck, and it's it's just a really good card. It's just really powerful. If we're playing a, uh, so much red, it's just worth it. It's good against aggro. It's good against control. It you know deals. Dan it's just it's just a really solid card, basically. Anyway, that that's it here for Grixis Midrange. Uh, not too much to say about the deck. After those games there. Um, the one I certainly regret losing was that Vampire one. I definitely think I could have won games one and game three there, but just didn't quite work out for us. I could have could have made a block that I didn't in the game one, that maybe that would have won it for us. 
Um, but then, yeah, lost to a couple couple decks you don't see very much of. You know, Demir Control, which I think is just a coin flip, but we lost it. And then Phoenix, which um, probably worse than a coin flip for us, but not, not that much worse than a coin flip because the, the Planeswalker part of the deck is really good there. Um, but yeah, good good showing still against the tier one decks against vampires and uh, and scape shift. I think you know we beat vampires once and we were really unlucky to lose the other vampire matchup. <laughs> Just made the pun of the century. Opponent at three and you lightning strike their war boss. <laughs> that's okay. That can happen. Anyway, that's Grixis Midrange. Uh, if you're watching the video later on YouTube, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you're enjoying the deck. Um, like I said, I think I may make a uh, deck guide for this one. Um, with sideboarding guides and, and stuff like that, matchup matchup guides kind of talk about the deck and all the matchups and sideboarding and stuff like that. Uh, if you're interested in that, let me know. Um, and if so, I'll maybe I'll make that tomorrow um, during the day before normal stream time and put that up on YouTube. Um, but there we go. All right, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.